we've just seen that we can have a repetition inside another repetition structure and we saw previously we can have a conditional structure inside a conditional structure but we can also have a conditional nested in a repetition so here we have our boolean loop of a do while and while that is true we're going to consider an if else end if structure with a boolean to expression and one process to complete if it's true and one another process to complete if the boolean to is false once we've completed that if else we then repeat the loop until the until the boolean one for the while is no longer true let's take a look at an example here's an application i created in visual basic to find the prime factorization of an integer so the user enters a number such as 180 they click the find factorization and it boils it down to a multiplication of all the prime numbers to get to that number so 180 is equal to 1 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. If I simply put in a 6 here, we get 6 is equal to 1 times 2 times 3. 278 is 1 times 2 times 139, 139 being a prime number. Let's look at the code to calculate these prime factorizations for our integer. My interface is a bunch of labels and then three objects that are named that are used in the code. The first is the text box named txt number. That's the integer the user enters. And then a button called btn factorization, which starts the process, and a label for output named lbl output. I coded the text changed event for the text box so that anytime the text changes, it's going to reset the text to lbl output to be enter an integer and click find factorization. I use chr34 for our quote characters in an interpolated string to put quotes around find factorization. The code for the button then, handling its click event, is I created a variable called myInt as integer. It's going to equal the text of txt number converted to an integer. Next prime will be 2 as an integer variable, and factorials as an integer equals 1. I want to keep track of how many factorials there are because if there's only 2 then it's a prime number and we'll tell them it's a prime number. LBL output.txt then equals an interplay string of my int, wherever the number is, equals and a 1. Here is the loop with the nested conditional. So I'm going to continue the loop while my int does not equal 1 the value of my int will change over the course of the loop through the if else end if structure if my int mod next prime starting out as 2 equals 0 it's evenly divisible by by 2 in this case then i know that we can divide that number by 2 and 2 is a prime factor lbl output dot text then equals concatenation an x for multiplication and next prime and I increment factorials. Then I want to divide my int integer division by next prime. You get a new value for my int. Thus, my int will be changing throughout the loop. Otherwise, I'm going to increment next prime by 1. Now, the reason I do it this way is you might have the same prime multiple times. We saw that for 180, it was 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. So the 2 and the 3 are each used more than once. So by putting it in a loop and not incrementing next prime until we're done with that prime number, we will get the correct prime factorization. Once I've gone through all the primes and we're back down to 1, if it was, say, 17, the last number we would try to divide by would be a 17. And that's going to go in evenly, and so we know that it's 1 times 17, and our factors, our factorials, would be 2. So I'll have an if and if, that if factorials is, is equal to 2, then I'm going to display that that is a prime number on a second line. Again, let me just run this. So there's my 180, which was the default. If I put in a 17, I'm told 17 is equal to 1 times 17, and 17 is a prime number. I mentioned that 139 being a prime number. Yes, it is. 64 is equal to 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 
and 15 is equal to 1 times 3 times 5. 6,138 is 1 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 11 times 31. And again, another prime number, if I just do 2, I'm told it is a prime number. So that is using a conditional structure inside of a loop. And by the way, we can use any type of repetition structure and any type of conditional structure in this nesting process. So here's an example where I have a select case conditional that is nested inside a for each next loop. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the Programming Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.